junkie. Do you know, she asks, why they call it kicking the habit man? Because you lay in a bed and your legs all balled up twitch. You can't sleep, your eyelids scream, and your insides burn like acid. I can smell a gram of smack a block away. I really love the way it makes me sleep. The fifth day in withdrawal, she rocks a porcelain toilet off its cement flooring and pummels a 300 pound woman attendant till her bony hands turn red as crabs. This shouldn't happen to me. Can't they fucking see I'm white? She screams. Spitting tears. This sad, this girl, very thin, who is my daughter. My wife dreams of Sihanouk, Prince, Cambodia's Prince Sihanouk. Chaste, sweet Sihanouk, blue-helmeted coalition troops and armless villains who salute the legless triumph over landmines. A gangling American president and eight CEOs from three continents clog the black onion fields fluttering like prayer wheels across the river from Phnom Penh. Khmer Rouge waving rifles and flags. Spectral pole pot is felt fleeing into the strangled jungle. <laughs> fleeing into the strangled jungle on a Chinese bicycle. We bring VCRs and take back rubber, young rice, and girls. In my wife's dream, we are deaf, big salaried men, large intentioned, wide legged fools who can't sing French. Sihanouk bows from his tassel festooned podium and the sky turns white and then red. Oh. Now that I've got you really depressed, I, uh, <laughs> saying goodbye to the vampire. Hello. Saturday, I moved my son's clothes from the group home in Grimace Park to a project piss dark, no elevator, that ran above the second floor in Far Rockaway so he could stay out of the cold with his new goth family. He took out his nose ring stud because it got infected. Six steep story walk up to a silence cramped with sleepers, mangled blankets, and rotten sheets. Dishes waiting, suitcases dropped in the blue light hall. Toothpaste, sponge mop, collegiate dictionary, phone rings. The person on the other end is waiting at the train station in a round black Buddha hat and full length cape. My boy has to pick her up at the left turret right away. Driving back through Vinnie's clam shack in Brooklyn, I stop to chew a sharp garlic mashed potato, saying goodbye the best way I can without looking back. I, I was going to read for an hour and a half, but uh, I figured, figured I might do a little shorter than that. Uh, <laughs> the 
This one takes place in the Bronx. It's called Brook Avenue. I walk off for coffee and a corn muffin away from the post office across two blocks of fire dark rubble rich with wildflowers past the dusty cinder running track the handball courts slapped at dawn by shadowy athletic ghosts the north south commuter lines walled arteries still silent the 138th street stop the local doesn't make anymore past a new prison where the neighborhood kids matriculate to when school is through the woman in shorts the first person I have seen outside today who holds in her rusted car that bad, 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 bad boys make you feel so good <laughs> isn't just a disco tune, but a career opportunity. Past the Pan Caliente Bakery, which is closed, to the bodega run by a society of Dominicans who are powerful smokers and swimmers and prodigious drinkers of beer, to the old piano factory, the one boarded up since I was a kid, and I look up and see a tree, incongruous and growing. A storied oak burst from a hole in that cheesecloth roof. And I feel so full of myself walking back sipping coffee from a styrofoam cup that when I pass the woman in the cutoff shorts breathing deeply, I tell her she looks really, really good. <laughs> and she says, smoothing her hair, sitting up, I know. <laughs> Beauty, beauty is what I live for. <laughs> wow. 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 Read one more. Oh, yeah. one more. You got seven minutes, man. I'll read slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading poems that I that I never read anymore, and I don't know why the fuck that is. Uh, this one is a little long, and I'll conclude with this one. It's called uh, What to Leave Out in Seattle. Parallel lines can't bang each other, and six and nine are the same upside down. So they gave her a drug which soaks dope up through a tube stuck in her arm, which made her believe she was dead. And at the same time, she dreamt she was strapped into a hospital bed, same as in fact she was in water-ripe Seattle, hydraulic lift of the Pacific Rim. Without her California non-driver photo ID that her friend Kim, and the mother of her friend named Kim too, the two Kims, helped her OD on sleeping pills, oh, melatonin, and plastic bags of Mexican black tar smack. So she could get placed in a program, free, for people who need to quit being addicts. Or something. She thought she'd understood that much. She dreamt they couldn't hear a thing she whispered, that she was outside looking in at a fool in a Grateful Dead ponytail saying she had killed herself. Successful suicide. Wanted to die. She dreamt they didn't have a clue. She dreamt her lips moved, but no one bent to hear them. It was very white in the corridor, and the bed she was in glowed red. The fluorescent lights overhead were too bright for anyone to hear her. She dreamt she was laying her skin smooth as Noxzema under fathoms, layers of beautiful purple and blue. Not angel food, but water that pressed hard, and iron vests squeezing her breasts and all the air she needed was somewhere else, in a very different foreign ocean. She dreamt they phoned her parents, told them she was dead, 
said she'd killed herself, but didn't quite spell it out to find why or how the accident had happened, and it was a mishap. Her best attempt gone wrong to finally get better. A bad fuck up, her death. She dreamt she was swim swimming like crazy. She dreamt her legs kicked for three days and she awoke wasted three days later, a shrunken female Jesus. And somehow the rock got rolled and she stumbled, brushing spiders from her neck through lightning and powder and crawled from weakling to zealot. She rose and made phone calls and emails to everyone she could remember she had ever lied to. I'm alive, she began, trying to make things right for the first time in her new life. As if an angel in white, a cool angel in a terry cloth robe, who spoke in bebop and rap and hummed jazz into her ear, everything she was supposed to say the notes she was to stress in her new voice. And most importantly, which melodies to forget. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Yay. All right, we gotta come back again.